Today we're going to talk about new gear from Magmod, Spider, and Shure. Welcome to Gear Spotlight. I'm Susie Taylor, your host, and today I'm joined by Scott Ferentz, local photographer here in the Ares in the Phoenix, Arizona area. Thanks Hi. for joining us. It's glad to be here. Me. <laughs> <laughs> so today, um, let's look at some of this new gear that we've received uh, from Magmod, Spider, and Shure. And I am a huge fan of gadgets that work. So um, first off, let's take a look at this new uh, kit that is from Magmod. This is the Magmod Basic Kit, but all of these components are stretchable and they fit any size flash. So this would be the outside that part? That is the mag grip. So that grips onto so the... Instead of having this on, you yep. get rid of this and you put this on and it's a uh, rubber with magnets. Yeah, it's real stretchy. We can show this material probably with. Yeah. This is this also goes around the flash and can hold the transmitter. Uh, if you're using something like a pocket wizard to trigger your flash, a remote trigger. And um, it's this stretchy, I'm not sure, it's rubberized. Rubber? Yeah. But it's like a big giant healthy rubber band yeah, or an inner it tube. A, it's real it is thick. inner tube. That's that's exactly it. It feels kind of like Rubbery, so like then you would tube. just put this on the base and you stretch this out and your pocket wizard just sits right in there? Yep. Oh, that's nice. That'll oh, work. Seems very well made. It didn't hurt any controls of the flash. So we're, many of us are familiar with this style of diffuser for an, uh, an on-camera flash and uh, or for flash guns like speed lights. And this kit and, and some of what Magmod uh, provides, their solutions are for basically kicking it up a notch on your on your flash guns. This allows you to combine not only uh, the diffusing panel, but also colored gels, and you can stack them. Scott's going to demonstrate a little bit of that. That's an ND filter. ND filter, a green. Yeah. Blue for tungsten or fluorescent yeah. lighting. CTOs, oranges, yep. and various. Some warming filters. Warming. And then even extra gadgety next to those is a grid. It's a rubber grid. Yeah. And so, it's magnet and it. Yeah. That's cool. It just magnetizes right on there. So quick on, quick off. If you are shooting and then you decide it's a little bit too cool and you need to throw on a warming filter, you're not sure how much warming, start with a light, you know, there's a medium one, start with that. You have if you need to go a little more warm, stack on the next lighter layer of warming filter. If you can, to your, you can put as many as you want. I think, I think you can do approximately four i tell you where I used this warming filter. I was mm -hmm. shooting an architectural shoot, yeah. and I was using a speed light mm -hmm. on that architectural shoot. And in the fireplace, uh, I warmed it up with, I think, four sheets of CTO full. Uh, but they were big, and I didn't want to cut them because I use them on my regular um, you know, flash units, you know, my, my bigger ones. Mm -hmm. So I had all this stuff full, and it was big and huge and bulky. But if I would have had this, you know, I mean... Simple, clean, easy. Yeah. You know, and it actually was kind of a pain. You know, I had to tape it because I couldn't sure. clamp it anywhere. And you know, and you're trying not yeah. to damage those either because yeah. you want them to still be usable on your exactly. on your studio. And, and this strokes. is clean. And I put it in the fireplace. I piled logs around it, and this thing nice. popped off, and it was just a beautiful glow like a fire. Wonderful. It was really cool. Yeah. So this so, one, and it would be super quick. Yeah. So you could put instead of the yeah that diffuser, you one. would yep. put this on with the little magnet thing and boy that is strong. Yep, brilliant. And you can grid that to also if you need to. I mean a diffused Well gridded. and I noticed something on this Flash. one which I don't even know is part of their deal. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you like to bounce things mm -hmm. and you can still pull out your little thing on yeah. not this particular unit and you could still put this diffuser on if mm -hmm. you wanted to. 
and put that on so it would hold the diffuser. And if you had mm -hmm. the little white card, this one doesn't. Oh, the, for the catch yeah, lights. For the catch uh -huh. light. And, you know, I typically would do that with mine. I would kick it up and the little white so you could mm -hmm. bounce it in, shoot through, bounce sure. it off the ceiling. Yep. So that's a, that's a nice little option, option which you can't do, do with can't, that. Yeah, you can't do that um, with that. You know, some people that I know that shoot a lot of grip and grin stuff, they, mm -hmm. uh, they just use a little bounce right. portion, but that's nice. So uh, I also have for my uh, flash, I have from some time ago, a little thing that kind of Velcros over the front and you yes. slide the little gels in, yeah. but it has to fit just right yeah. over the front of your flash and light comes out on the edges and stuff. And this doesn't. Yeah. So this fits any flash model pretty much yes um, because it stretches and uh, the size of it for these gels is sufficient to cover the whole front face of the flash yep and you could put every gel here that's here there's three six seven eight or whatever it is yeah. total number it's you like can put all the number. gels uh -huh. and and the grid on it too yeah on top of that if nice. you wanted to which yeah. is nice great it's ninety dollars and uh, go to I think magmod.com or probably Adorama and uh, and B and H and check those out. Yeah. So I like it. It's, super, a it, it's a gadget that works. Um, would I use it? I actually, yeah, I, I would put this. I have one of these grids with a different modifier, but it's mm -hmm. a pain. I do the Velcro thing. Mm -hmm. and I never use it because it takes too long. Yeah, I think I would do a little bit more um, kind of just trial with, or not trial, but I would experiment a little bit more with it while I'm shooting just because it's so easy to switch it out. So you're not really committing a lot of time to making a change. If you don't like it, take it off, you know, yeah, try a different is, filter, keep this going. This is nice. I do Comes like the little bag. Yeah. Um, the little mag put, mod bag so yep. everything would go in it. Yep. Toss it nice. in the pouch. And I like uh, the radio slate thing because I mm -hmm. usually, you know, hang the clip and do whatever and it's spring mm. and you know if it's windy and you know it's pain sure. and these as we were talking always come off and fall you take them out of the case and they're falling on the ground yeah yeah makes you look real professional <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> it's a win i like one of, it one of my big uh, purchases when i first got my uh, first dslr <laughs> there you go. so next i want to cover um this is a brand new product from spider and you may already know about spider holsters, and they do have a, um, a very uh, well-made leather hand grip that is a little bit bigger for DSLR cameras. And this is a brand new spider light hand strap that we just got. Um, this is on Kickstarter and I think is almost funded completely as um, a campaign on, on Kickstarter. And I'm excited about this, and I'll tell you why. I have uh, a new mirrorless camera that's, I'm new uh, to just switching and committing to GX8, to Lumix uh, mirrorless cameras this year. And one of my challenges was I kept accidentally mashing the buttons holding the camera. And the hand strap helps me with that. However, uh, the hand straps, that are out there, they don't, they're not as comfortable. And the regular spider holster can or spider hand strap was a little bit too big. So this is designed but for this, mirrorless I think, cameras? Yeah, it's for smaller form factor cameras. They have uh, it comes with several adapter uh, clips that help you pick the optimum angle at which the hand strap attaches to the various uh, points on the camera. So some cameras have a, a native like built-in hand strap and then others kind of have a little swivel kind of yeah. triangular ring on them and things like that. But they account for all of that on their uh, in their package that you get with the product. It is brand new and I haven't tried it yet but I'm excited to try it out because I put just a cheapy hand strap on my GX8 and I do not mash the buttons anymore. But I fiddle with the hand strap because it's not as solid as that. Like the, it spins around and stuff. Yeah. And this won't. This will stay. Um, it's a little bit more, uh, not rigid, but Stiff. what's the word? Yeah, it's it's not um, floppy like a standard regular hand strap. So it's gonna have a nice form factor and your hand will yeah. fit in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward to try, trying it out. We just got it. 
and I haven't had a chance to check it out, but because it is on Kickstarter and we want everybody to know about it, you know, as soon as we, as soon as we do, basically. Cool. <laughs> so You're next gonna get step, it. well, I, I probably will buy one. Yes, absolutely. I would, I'm going to, uh, we're going to put it on Nick's camera and try it out there so that we can both check it out. And he's got a trip coming up, so I think he'll probably take it with. And uh, and then I'll make my decision, but it's looking good. So, I can't say I don't have a mirrorless, but... Um, well, a lighter camera, too. I mean, yeah. it doesn't have to... It could be a bridge camera and, you know, anything like that. I do have a point and shoot. Cool. A little Leica, so that might fit on that. Yeah. I don't like to use the strap. Actually, I have a little, their little strap. Thing. That in that little wrist yeah. strap kind of thing, um, pretty much useless unless I'm shooting over something and I just don't want to like drop it off the, yeah, you know. Yeah, it always makes me feel weird when it's there. Yeah, because then when I'm done and I want to set it down, it's just hanging from my wrist. And that would be nice. Yeah. Cool. So, so last but not least is our third product in our lineup today from Sure, and this is the MV88. And this is for, uh, this particular one is for the iPhone or iDevices. You could put it on an iPad, I, uh, iPod, iPad, uh, iPod Touch, and, uh, and iPhone. And this is a uh, stereo unidirectional mic. And here's the little box. This is the, again, this is the MV88. It runs... 149. It has a free app on uh, the App Store, and it is hinged. So, being directional, you point it at yourself and uh, and talk, especially if while you're doing Facebook video feeds mm. or Periscope or Instagram video or Snapchat or any of that. It's got a little wind cancellation yeah. thing, little foam thing. We've been using it. Uh, Nick's been using it for his uh, video podcast, his his little Facebook feed uh, clips. He'll do short gonna, daily gonna, clips and things like that. I plug it in my phone, but I don't have it with Right, me. right, right. Maybe one of our, our assistants can hand us a phone. I think my, so, my phone is in, a, in an otter box. Oh, there's one. All right. So here, the, uh, the thing that we found, too, that was, um, let me see if I can put it in there, if I can see, there we go. The thing that we found is that when you're doing the, when you're uh, videoing with the camera that's self-facing mm -hmm. and it's pointing at you, that's great. When, if you want to also flip it around, flip the camera around, to the rear facing camera and then flip the microphone that direction it does not actually articulate past so the 90 to degrees take it out and so this it. is a design suggestion that we have for sure is to let it actually go 180 degrees versus 90 degrees okay. that's what we found so far so if you wanted it to be to the other side you'd have to unplug it Right. Plug it in to get it that way. Yeah, so it's not really conducive to capturing directional audio when you're, let's say, you and I are trying to, to do a, a video, and then I want it to pick up directly your voice strongly right. and cut out the, out, you know, the background voice, then it's not, it's going to be pointed, like, at my knees. So, yeah. But audio quality is wonderful. It's sure. So it's got exceptional uh, range, and we've had great experience with it so far. $149. Again, it is stereo, uh, unidirectional, and it comes with the, or you can download the free app. So, cool. yeah. Some cool gadgets. Um, comes with this little padded case, which is nice, too. Um, but these are some great. It's a nice little great, uh, soft, hard case. Yeah. That is nice. It's kind of, you know, crush resistant. It's form fitted inside. You can't see that on the camera, but it's form fitted inside. A little clamshell. Yeah, zips up, which is kind of nice. Pretty hard. You you could just toss that in your in your bag and not really worry about it. Yeah, that's gonna work. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Cool. So. What was the price point on that again? One forty nine. Yep. And uh, they would have it 
certainly at B&H and a variety of other retailers, and also places that you might not always think about for camera gear, but they would probably also have this at Guitar Center or um, other places that have audio uh, gear too. So quick think, setup, quick record. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Bingo. All right. Sounds good. Well, that's all we have to go over today. But uh, be tuned, stay tuned for new episodes, and uh, we look forward to bringing you all kinds of new gadgets that work here on Gear Spotlight. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Pleasure. See you guys.